I know I'm supposed to be grateful for things and I logically understand and appreciate that I have many things in my life to be grateful for, but I don't really feel it. Gratitude doesn't reach my heart. It's just an idea in my brain that doesn't make me feel anything. That's what I would have said for a long time in my own life. And that's something I still hear frequently from the people I'm working with in therapy sessions. Most of us know at this point that gratitude is helpful. It's not really like a secret anymore. It, it's generally understood that gratitude is good for our mental health. And, and we know that it does a tremendous amount of positive things for people. It decreases our appraisal of stressors. It can improve our quality of sleep. It can improve our self-esteem. It can decrease depression and anxiety. It's good for our physical health. It's just a really, really good thing to do. But in the midst of telling us all of the reasons we should do it, I found that people often forget or maybe don't understand that they need to tell us how to do it. Because gratitude isn't just a switch that you can flip in your brain. It's also not necessarily an automatic experience that we occur just as because we have good things in our lives, especially I think with depression and, and probably anxiety to a degree as well. Our brains are just kind of wired against that way of thinking. And we so often end up in this kind of dichotomy where it's like, I, I know I have good stuff, but when you tell me to be grateful, like, what does that mean? Does that mean I just think and re remind myself I have clothes or whatever? Because it doesn't always do anything. And, and some of us, and I include myself in this group of people, need to be taught how to feel gratitude. I believe that gratitude, the ability to, to experience it as an emotion and not just a thought exercise, is actually a skill. And so like any skill, gratitude is something that we have to practice, that we have to cultivate, that we have to work on, at least some of us. I know I was like that. I know I still am like that to a degree. So today I'm going to teach you six of my most powerful gratitude building tools that I try to use every single day to make sure I actually feel grateful for the things in my life and that those thoughts actually reach my heart. So the first technique I wanna teach you about today is pretend that you're the only person in the world who has it. What I mean by that is we, we attribute so much value to scarcity. And so sometimes it's hard for us to be grateful for things that either most people in the world have, or at least most people we know have. So like if you live in America, you might not feel all that grateful for your clothing because most people in America have clothing. It isn't really that big of a deal. But what if you were, if, th think about all the things you want to be grateful for, whatever you think, oh, I should have, I should have feelings about that. Do a little thought exercise where you imagine you are the only person in the entire world who got to have that thing. How special would it feel to you if no one else had it? If you have children, imagine what if I'm what if I was the only person in the world who could have kids? No one else except me got to have kids. Can you imagine how special that would feel? for you to be the one person on this planet who gets to raise other human beings? Can you imagine how good you'd feel about that? Now, why should that feel any less good to you just because you're not the only person who has it? How does other people getting to do that cheapen it for you? It shouldn't, but sometimes we need to trick our brains a little bit. If I was the only person on earth who got to be a therapist, I, I do love my job anyway. I do... I'm not going to say I wake up with a smile on my face every day. I wake up with a smile on my face many days when I think about coming to work. Not every day, but many days. But if I was the only person, if I was the person, well, actually, if I was, I was going to say if I was the person everyone came to with their problems in the whole world, I'd love that. That actually sounds terrible. Like once I think about it for more than a second, that would be completely overwhelming. But that's not the point. <laughs> the point is you have so many special things that you don't realize are special because other people have them. And so doing this thought exercise where you imagine you were the only person on earth who got to do it is really, it can help put things into the proper frame and teach us how special they are. If you were the only person on earth who had a healthy physical body, like what if you were the only person on earth who could walk? How about that? Every human being other than you is wheelchair bound or has no legs or I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with them but no one can walk except you. 
every time you went for a walk outside, you would feel like the king or queen of the entire world, right? Like that would feel like such a gift that you have this physical ability. Well, it's not any less special just because other people have it too. It's still amazing to be able to walk, but we don't realize how special things are when they're normal, when we see them all over the place every day. So try that thought exercise just to put the things you already have into a little bit more perspective. The second technique I want you to try is try to assign a value to things. Easiest way to do this is financially, right? So think about lots of special things in your life, whether that's people, memories, statuses, achievements. And I know this either isn't possible or is illegal, but imagine like if you could sell that thing, how much would you sell it for? How much would someone have to offer you to take it from you? If someone could buy your most precious memory and like literally when I say buy it, I mean like you don't get to have it anymore. Like they pulled this memory out of your brain and you can no longer recall this memory. You lose it forever. How much money would it take for you to agree to that? Or maybe it's your favorite album, your favorite song, your favorite movie. If someone could buy it from you, not just like buy the movie on DVD or whatever, but like they get it forever and you never get to watch it. You never get to listen to it again. You lose it forever. How much money would that cost? How much would they have to offer you? Sometimes now that I have a YouTube channel, sometimes I think about things in like subscribers because I want to get more subscribers, right? And I see people with millions of subscribers and I'm like, why don't I have millions of subscribers? So sometimes I think about it. It can be any kind of value. It doesn't have to be money. One night after my daughter got out of the bathtub, she was just like staring at me. She just does that sometimes. She'll just stare into my eyes. Now it's just staring back at her and this thought popped into my head and it was like, the, the thought was like, I would not trade you for a billion subscribers. Like that's, there's no amount. And, and, but if I woke up tomorrow and had a billion subscribers, I would be like, holy crap. Like, this is the great, this is the best day of my life. But I have something every day that I'm saying is better than that. So then why don't I feel that sense of gratitude every day? Because it's about perspective, because I don't think about it in that way, because I have her every day. So it doesn't register to me that that's a special thing because it's normal. But some of your normal things are special. And sometimes we need to think about them in terms of value, some kind of measurable numerical metric in order to realize just how special, just how valuable they are because it's so easy to overlook the normal things. So technique number two is try to assign some kind of value to the things that you have. The third technique for increasing the amount of gratitude that you feel is try tuning into your body more often. I think so often, especially like, I hate to even use this term to describe myself, but those of us who are intellectuals, we everything is in our heads, right? We think about everything and, and we experience the world like as a brain who's like in a container basically. And, and our bodies and our physical experiences are often kind of afterthoughts, right? There's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's just a personality trait. It makes some things easier. It makes some things harder. I think it makes gratitude harder and especially makes gratitude for physical experiences harder. Like if I'm, if I'm out for a walk on a beautiful day and the breeze is blowing and I can smell flowers and trees, and birds are chirping. I, I, my first thought, if I'm like, I should experience gratitude right now, is I'll think about all those things in my mind. I'm physically experiencing them right now, but I'll think about them. And like, this is actually a kind of embarrassing glimpse into my brain, but I'll be like, birds are cool. Flowers are pretty. Like, I, I, they're ideas in my brain and they don't really connect to an emotion. They're just thoughts. But if I just stop thinking, and just feel all those things. This has actually happened to me. I'll, I'll just straight up cry sometimes. Like I've just teared up from tuning into the physiological experience of just how beautiful nature is. But when I think about it in my mind, it doesn't feel that special. There's something about actually tuning into your physical experiences that bypasses a lot of the just crap that goes on up here and it lets our experiences be something a little more pure, a little more sensory, something we can actually feel and not just think about. So if you're like me and you're kind of an overthinker and you tend to filter all your experiences through your brain and through your thoughts, 
let your body lead sometimes. Just take things in as a sensory experience and, and don't, don't make yourself think about them so much. Sometimes just experiencing a pure physiological sensation will give you a much higher degree of gratitude than thinking about it will and trying to recognize it mentally. The fourth technique I want to teach you for trying to increase your gratitude, this one's going to seem very paradoxical. Have less of the thing that you're trying to feel gratitude about. This doesn't work with everything. For example, don't do this with like children. <laughs> if you think, oh, I've, I have trouble feeling gratitude for my children. I should have fewer children. Y you've misunderstood the message of what I'm saying to you. This one is more about stuff. Because a lot of us, again, I know I have a, 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 a national audience. And so, but I've only lived in America. I've actually never even been outside the country. So I only really know how things work here. Some of what I'm describing may not be relatable to people who live in very different cultures. But here in America, most of us have too much stuff. And, and it, if you if you don't have enough stuff, that might not make sense. Like, how? what a stupid problem. How could people have too much stuff? It's a problem. And I don't even mean hoarders. I mean, like, normal people. One of the problems that I have had, something that's really blocked my gratitude, is when I have a lot of some certain thing, it's hard for me to remember the individual things that I have. And it all just kind of becomes this congealed mass in my brain and I can't really pick out anything that I am grateful for. So I'm basically saying less is more. I, I admit I'm, I'm somewhat of a minimalist in some areas, but this stuff really works, at least for me. So I'll give you an example. Something that I'm really into, something I really like nerd out about is fragrances or like colognes. I, I won't explain to you why cologne is the wrong term because 99.9% .9 of you don't care and will still call it cologne, but fragrances is the right term for what I'm describing. Anyway, I used to have like, I don't know, 25 different men's fragrances. And I knew I had a cool collection, but like I couldn't even remember all the things that I had. And so I, I couldn't really experience individual gratitude or satisfaction for each. You might think like the more stuff you have in some certain category, just the happier you are, the more, the more happy you are about that. But there's a hard limit. And that limit is how much can you conceptualize and remember at any given time? If you have more things in some certain category than you can remember that you have or than you can functionally use, they don't produce any additional gratitude or satisfaction because you don't know that you have them and you don't get any use out of them. I have trimmed my collection down to five. I only own five fragrances now. And I experience more gratitude for the fewer amount of fragrances that I have than I did when I have a massive collection. I've done that with a lot of other things in my life too. I've done that with clothes. Back when I was a gamer, I did that with games. I used to have so many games. It was so stupid. I spent more time trying to figure out which one to play than I did playing them. It was completely counterproductive. So if you struggle with gratitude, with material possessions. And, and material possessions are absolutely something you can have gratitude about. There's nothing wrong with that. But you might find that it's difficult if you have a lot of stuff because the more things that you have, the less special each individual thing feels. I mean, you, you'll even just forget that you even have stuff because you have so much other stuff like that. You don't have space in your brain for that much knowledge or information. So trimming down your collections can be a really effective tool to raise your gratitude level. If that's something that's hard for you or kind of freaks you out, consider making a tier list. You, you, a lot of you probably know what tier lists are. Basically, it just means like you think about different rating systems, like my absolute favorite, like really, really awesome, really good, pretty good. I'm kind of okay with this. Kind of rate your stuff on this tier list, right? And then pick the lowest level and cut that off. Say so like, okay, if this is in my fifth tier of fragrances, how often am I really going to wear this? Rarely, if ever. My life would not be affected if I didn't have these things anymore. And you just keep cutting off the lowest tier until you don't have that much left. And I can almost guarantee you, your gratitude will actually go up when you have fewer things in that domain. I know it sounds weird, but just try it out and see if I'm not right. The fifth tool that I use to increase gratitude, this one's more gratitude for experiences. And I have mentioned this before in a different video, but it's an important gratitude tool. So I'm restating it in this video is imagine that you are doing that thing for the last time, because just like our possessions or our relationships, our experiences, when we have done the same thing many times, they also lose that element of feeling special, even if they objectively are special. 
Um, I know I've said this before, but my grandparents' farm, we would go there twice a year, every year when I was growing up for like over a decade. And so it was, it was always fun. It was always exciting, but it was also like, it was, it was a pretty normal thing. It was just like, oh, we're going to the farm. That's what we do this time of year. And then eventually my grandparents sold the farm and moved to town. And not that long after that, they passed away. And it's like, I, I, I think I remember the last time I was at the farm. I'm not even sure if I correctly remember the last time. There was one time I remember though, when I was an adolescent, um, which would have been around the right time frame. And I remember I brought my Super Nintendo and me and my brother and even my sister to a degree spent a lot of time playing video games on that trip. And it really bums me out because I think that was the last time. I think that was the last time. I didn't know it was going to be the last time. That's the thing. I didn't know what was going to happen next. We don't, we don't always have advanced notice of when things are going to end. You don't know when this place is not going to be accessible to you anymore. You don't know what, like, not to be morbid. I'm not trying to freak you out and raise your anxiety level, but like, you don't know when a person is going to die. And someone who's been in your life for a long time, like a parent, for example, you're used to having them around. So seeing them might not feel special. It's like, oh, it's my dad. He's always there. He won't be. And you might not know when the last time you get to interact with him is. And so I, this one is easier said than done. I'm not going to act like I've mastered this or like I do this all the time. But if I try to remind myself, not in like a morbid, you got to be careful with this one because this can get super depressing. Okay. Don't like get nihilistic with this. But if you can just gently remind yourself, there's a chance this might be the last time I get to do this thing. It can suddenly feel a lot more special that you're doing that thing. And sometimes that's all we need. Sometimes that little boost gives you that gratitude that you've been looking for, that you haven't really been able to connect with emotionally. And so the sixth and final technique I want to teach you about, I'm almost sure you've heard of this one before. It's not groundbreaking and it's a little similar to the last one, but I'm including it for completion because it is a very effective technique. And even if you know about it, you may not use it that often. And it is very powerful. And it's simply to imagine your life without that thing. I, I think so often we think of gratitude as like a, like, look at this thing I have. And, and you try to just like see it or remember that you have it. And you think that that being aware of its presence in your life is going to automatically create gratitude. I've just found that for me, no matter what the thing is, that just doesn't happen very often. But if I invert it and go the opposite direction, and I try to think, how would I feel if I didn't have it? Like, and and it, I instantly get this sense of like this, especially if it's like a person, I get this sense of like a void or a black hole inside of me. Like there, my life is incomplete. My life is missing something. And like, I will never be the same without that thing or without that person. And then I remind myself, oh, you still have it. And, and that sensation of like feeling like I lost it. I know I have it. You know, it's, it, it's, again, this is a mental technique, but feeling like I lost that thing and feeling like that sorrow and that despair that would come with losing this thing. And then the feeling of completeness comes rushing back because I remember I still have it. I still, everything's okay. I still, that often creates gratitude for me much, much more so than just thinking about the thing and being like, isn't it cool that I have this? Isn't it cool that I'm married? Isn't it cool that I have kids? It's like, what if something happened again? Again, you got to be careful with this one too, because this one can also get morbid and anxiety provoking. You don't want to accidentally cause yourself a panic attack being like, what if my partner got into a car accident on the way home with all my kids in the car? Like, don't, not like that, <laughs> but just, there's so many things that don't feel special to you because you're used to having them that if you woke up tomorrow or something happened and, and they were gone, you would be devastated. But that didn't happen today. You didn't lose them. You didn't lose it. They're still there. Let that, just, just, just play around with it. Don't go too deep with it. Just play around with it for a little bit. Let yourself feel just that first little spike of like, oh man, that would be awful. And then bring yourself back from that edge. Like, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to worry about that today. Go and appreciate that thing. Go play with your kids. Go hug your partner. Go read that book. Go for a walk in your body that works. You still have it. It's okay. So those are my techniques. Some of them are weird. Some of them are weird versions of not normal or, or of normal techniques, but 
um, you probably know what to expect from me by now. So I hope that some of these techniques help you connect with a real sense of emotional gratitude in your life. Because no matter who you are and what you're going through, you do have special things in your life that are worth appreciating. Take care. I'll see you next time.